I was Sarah from Mac today, and I actually wanted to. Hello, we're going live with Sarah Mac today, and I actually wanted to start. Hello, we're going live with Sarah Mac today, and I actually wanted to start off by putting a record on until Sarah's here. And oh, Sarah Mac's already here. All right, I'm gonna have her join, and I'm gonna show you the experience of. A record going on a vinyl if you have not had this experience in a while. <laughs> Sarah! Hi! Hi, I'm just showing. What, oh, that's why it's not working. I'm putting on a George Harrison record. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a while. Like, uh, our friend Robin is visiting, and she said, I don't know the last time I experienced a record like this. Like, live, a vinyl, at home when you have the crackles and it's not just, like, an added feature. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so grateful to have this around all the time. And so, yeah, the experience, you wouldn't think it's, uh, oh, it's oh, just, it's such a treasure. So <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah, so welcome uh, for everyone that has is either from your people or my people. I would love for you to share more on what you're about, where you're at right now in life, and really what's lighting you up. Oh, so excited for this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. I'm, my name is Sarah Mack. I am a creative business coach. And I'm from England originally. I've been in America for more than a decade. I'm currently in New York. And, well, I travel a lot. I kind of thing and have been an entrepreneur for six, seven years now. And I support creatives to launch their dream businesses, coaches, healers, artists, entrepreneurs with a teaching practice who want to reach more people, work online, and um, launch coaching offers and digital courses and programs sharing their their passions and expertise mm. with all the people who are ready to eat that up and by sharing our stories authentically through the power of you know social media we get to impact more lives we get to create more abundance we get to create more freedom and that's really what's lighting me up a lot these days mm. is yeah supporting people to birth their dream life um mm. alongside their dream business and to really do it from a place of alignment with your truth what it is in the way that really lights you up in the way that brings you the most joy and fulfillment mm -hmm. and brings you lots of money in the process and really you know removing a lot of the blocks that we have around our ability to receive for the gifts that we have Mm -hmm. and are able to share and yeah so I love talking money mindset I love talking money mindset with creativity and um also the power of storytelling and authentic sharing mm -hmm. thank you so much <laughs> thank you for being here and what you just sparked was the conversation you said you were talking about coaching around receiving and I love that you brought this up because it um, and I love that we put alignment in the name of our talk today because I've been just tapping into what that really, the experience of it is like, not just what hearing of it might be, if that makes any sense. Um, and the idea that what is, what does alignment mean to you? What does that feel like to you? And um, yeah. Yeah. So alignment specifically for me feels um, like I'm living in integrity with myself mm. which means that I'm prioritizing the things that I genuinely are passionate about and that I genuinely care about and I think that's um that's an edge for a lot of women in business and for a lot of creatives in business because mm -hmm. you know, as with everything we live in things that were designed by men and mm -hmm. systems structures that were built on hundreds of years of patriarchy and you know now that we're in a place where we have access to these tools and we have access to education, we have access to higher levels of freedom that, you know, women of previous generations never had before. We're mm -hmm. getting to refine the way that we do things. We're getting to write our own rules and we have really an unlimited amount of freedom available to us. And so 
just really listening to ourselves and using self-trust as the like meter by which we judge mm -hmm. our decision making because there are a lot of things that don't feel good and acknowledging that and there are a lot of practices around the way we exchange money the way we make money the way we spend money the way we share money the way we contribute our energy and our time and our gifts and our expertise and um the way that we build relationships the way that we connect with people there are a lot of ways of doing that that don't feel good or that feel mm -hmm. out of control or that feel like we have to make a sacrifice that we're not happy making mm -hmm. and to really acknowledge that and to listen to ourselves and to allow whatever discomfort or resistance we have around any of those things that we know has the potential to bring us so much more freedom and so much more impact to navigate a new way and to be a trailblazer mm -hmm. and to define new standards for ourselves and to create new ways of doing business and making money and you know having you know creating relationships which essentially mm -hmm. everything is right any type yeah. of work is relationship creation mm -hmm. um and relationship nurturing mm -hmm. and to allow ourselves to do it in ways where we don't have to make sacrifices around the things that we don't feel comfortable making sacrifices around like our health or like quality time with the people that we love or mm -hmm. you know it's that that's important to us absolutely and i love that you're mentioning um, that there's there's freedom. Essentially, what I was hearing in that um, for a portion was it's uncomfortable to be in unknown territory and listen to ourselves and be there. And it's also very uncomfortable to put ourselves in a position that isn't fulfilling to us and isn't in alignment. So uh, is there something you would want to go deeper on the dis being able to distinguish the two and maybe your inner practice? Yeah, I love that. I was just writing about that today, actually. Mm. Like, I always feel we have a choice between two different types of pain. And there's the pain of ignoring what it is that we truly desire. Mm -hmm. And then there's the discomfort of saying yes to it and stepping into the unknown, which you know, our mind is always going to freak out. Because if we're doing something that we've never done before, or that previous generations of our family have never done before, then our mind is like, well, we don't know that for sure we're going to be safe doing this. So it will kick into resistance. Mm. And all of the stories and all, you know, look for as much evidence as possible to try to convince you to not step into that. So it's always about getting out of our head and get to our body and really mm. listening to how something feels and getting to understand, you know, that, those insights for ourselves because we're all different in the way that we connect yeah. with intuition right so learning really learning when just by trial and error and mm -hmm. you know taking really small steps and like following a hunch when it's probably illogical mm -hmm. even if our mind might be in resistance just because yeah. something really good on you know like an intuitive body cellular Absolutely. level and then starting to gather evidence that when I follow through on that, it actually, not only does it usually work out easier than trying to push in it, <laughs> yeah. but it brings us all the things that we could ever desire and more, right? All the, mm. wait, all the abundance. And, and then just to continue to like train our bodies to follow us, to, to follow that, that intuition and to trust ourselves and to build out the evidence that even when my mind is freaking out and thinks that it doesn't make sense and is throwing up all of these stories of resistance, that actually, when I do take a risk, you mm -hmm. know, follow these hunches and take action in that direction that I'm feeling called to, to move in, mm -hmm. things work out and it works and it's amazing. Mm. And the experience of that, when it's easier than you would expect or than, than I would have expected, it's just, it's absolutely miraculous. It, it's that a quote of either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle by Einstein. And I keep hearing that though, recently. Um, so I wanted to presence that. And when you talk about our stories coming up, I think there's a perfect segue into uh, what you mentioned of, of making more money, sharing our story. What does that mean to you? And how does, how does our story come into play with that? Yeah, so I was okay thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. Recent conversation, I think it was on a podcast, was just to remind ourselves value is objective. It's mm -hmm. subjective. Sorry, value is subjective. Yeah. So um, 
you know, and I've really seen this for myself, like I've, you know, massively raised the amount of income that I'm bringing in and, you know, reduced the amount of hours that I'm working. And so I've been through that journey of being like, oh, if I just pick a higher number, you know, will the world come tumbling down? Will all of the clients dry up? And it's like, no, I just pick a higher number. I create more abundance for myself and I just attract people who want to pay that number and who, you know, who resonate with the number that I've picked for the work that I'm choosing to contribute. And, um, and yeah, some people aren't going to pay that number, but other people are going to pay that number. And so just recognizing that everything that we're offering, whatever price we're choosing to charge, um, or we're willing to work for, or we desire to work for, there'll always be a match for people who value whatever it is that you've chosen to value, whatever it is that you're offering. Mm. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of like, we have, we have like what we think, or, you know, or like the standardized whatevers, but there aren't any standardized whatevers, like particularly for great too, right? Like, you know, out there charging like millions of dollars for like that type of work that other people are out there charging five dollars for like mm -hmm. there is no standard and and really like value is something that we get to tune into innately and to connect to and to identify because nobody will value you more than you value yourself mm. so really our work to be doing is to be connecting to and really like connecting our mind to the truth about the value mm. So that we can better articulate that and and so that we can celebrate that. And when we share what it is that we've identified as valuable within ourselves, with, you know, the wisdom that we embody, everything that we bring with us when we show up and we, you know, donate, or we uh, not donate, but like we contribute our energy, our time, our creativity, then um, we're better able to communicate that so that the people who also share that about those values can connect with us mm -hmm. and the more we share what we care about the more we share what we truly value the more we share about who we are where we've come from you know the lessons that we've learned um what it is that we embody as an individual then the easier it is for other people to to find that resonance because mm -hmm great value right is when we resonate with something when, when it speaks to us when it connects to us for a particular reason so by, our story is basically creating touch points for people to connect with us mm. you know that's how we it, it's kind of like matchmaking right like dating profile yeah. i really see like finding clients and building working relationships it's the exact same thing as dating it's like letting people know who you are and like what you want and what you stand for and the vision of what it is that you want to create so that when they match with that then they can you know they can opt into that and also mm -hmm. your when you really lean into that specificity is you just repel everybody mm -hmm. off in residence with you and so you get to avoid so much pain and discomfort from you know being let down or misunderstood or miscommunications so yeah it's that it's like the more you you are the yeah. easier your people to find you absolutely and that that actually it, it helped me think about or it brought to my attention uh the difference between your art and you or myself being surface level versus going deep and getting intimate with what i create and how my relationships kind of reflect and show back and forth what's going on there uh because the more vulnerable and intimate and connected our relationship with ourselves is, then we can spread that. And, and as my friend Robin who's here would put it, there's a place to land when someone else is expressing themselves and feels that we've also held that space for ourselves of vulnerability, of connection, of intimacy. And now there's place for, for connection to uh, thrive essentially. And so I love um, what you're you're bringing up here and something that came to mind was um, what was it? it was sharing your story being vulnerable I don't know I, I think I'm losing it right now but it was all around vulnerability and how important oh listen hearing from ourselves every single day is and and whatever way that you hear from yourself playing with it um, 
but it's just like then your value of yourself you can hear what is your value or what is my value with myself today and and that like starting your day with a practice where i'm loving on myself and i'm hearing from myself and i'm prioritizing that immediately sets my value or how i view my own self-worth or whatever it is you know like there's something going on that's invisible there that is working in my benefit when i choose myself first thing um, to express totally and um, yeah and this is what you touched on this is like the foundational practice for me that has you know allowed me to build my business in the way that's really felt aligned and you know to get to my first six figure year with what I had without having to like you know it, like it's crazy when you live in that way you get to side like skip past all of the levels that your mind thinks you need to graduate through mm -hmm. to get to go right wow and, like the key is when you, when it comes from you and you really learn to trust that and you really learn to value that the way you communicate that is going to be like completely on a whole other level than if mm -hmm. you're like trying to regurgitate something that's come from somewhere else right yeah. even even if what's coming from you is the same as mm -hmm. stuff that other people are doing but like the resonance and that connection with your own voice and your own message and your own truth and your own value Mm -hmm. will just make your work so much more poignant and invite other people to value it at a deeper level like mm -hmm. like the number one way to create more opportunity for sales more money when you really mm -hmm. you're genuinely passionate about like that just turns up the volume on everything and that can only come from like really what you care about when you listen mm-hmm Absolutely. Oh, when you listen too, I've been seeing the difference of H E R E with here and H E A R and realizing, Oh, does that mean like, what am I hearing when I'm present here? What's going on? It's a check-in for me now and it's music related. So I enjoy it. Um, and actually this is, this is one of my next questions is I've had friends and, and other, actually someone um, that mentioned it when I was saying, we're going to hop on this talk together is for artists who say uh, financially looking into the future, I either choose my family or my art because how would I support a family um, with an unknown path? And I would love to hear more on what, what you would respond to that. Yeah, that's such a good one. And that like, it's scarcity, right? It's scarcity in that like, we can't have it all. Exactly. Or both. And really when, when you unpack that, the belief is and so really that's an underestimation of our own power and our own mm. and um and like i it, i really resonate with that and mm -hmm. I, you know I'm going through that at the moment you know and like i'm getting to that age where it's like the the biological yeah. problem. And it's just like such a, 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 a like period of growth to be able to have to face those questions and to have mm -hmm. to face limiting beliefs. And what I've realized is, you know, and a, a lot of the time we don't have a lot of role models. And I think that's the main mm -hmm. issue is if we haven't seen it done before, or we've mm -hmm. seen tons and tons of role models of it not working well, then there are genuine reasons to fear for our safety, right? And we're like, mm -hmm. I, I see what I don't want and yeah. I'm afraid that I'm going to end up like that and which is why again it, it um, becomes so important to listen to our desires because you know I really believe that if we like our desires are divine like they're part of the ecosystem mm. have a desire to express something it's like if the cloud desires to rain there's a plant that that you know is positioned to receive that rain it needs that cloud yeah. to rain like yeah. everything we desire to create all the you know the money that we desire to experience the family mm -hmm that we desire to create, the art that we decide to create, the business that we, you know, the teaching, whatever it is that we desire to create is like a divine order, like a mm -hmm. divine directive because it's needed. Like there's mm -hmm. other places out there that need to receive whatever it is that we're feeling inspired to create. And so, you know, in knowing that, just as like whatever it is that happened in the, in the weather to provide the cloud with the opportunity to rain, 
we will be provided with all of the resources required in order to live out the vision of mm. what that we have a desire for. And when we, you know, it, it's in those moments where like you're scared, but you have a desire and you don't know how it's going to work out. And you know, by stepping into that, it's going to like explode all the limiting beliefs that you've carried mm -hmm. picked up from, from everybody else. Um, like it's in those moments that you choose to say yes and you choose to step into it with the intention that it gets to be fun and mm -hmm. you, know, you get to be provided for in all of the ways that will allow you to do it in the way that you desire to do it that's like a moment of expansion like when mm -hmm. we that we it's like you blast through whatever limiting stories were holding you small mm -hmm. and and you open up and that's what creates kind of like the vacuum to pull mm. in all of the resources the inspiration the ideas the connections the support everything that will allow you to you know, bring that into being at a higher level that's mm. what I've experienced that okay. yeah oh my gosh and it, it's so connected to what you were first noting in the beginning uh when we're talking about listening to ourselves of is it coming from the mind or is it, am I listening to my heart is it coming from my heart because I could, I have a couple of things that I use of, is it rooted in scarcity and fear or is it love? Like, am I, um, am I really hearing for myself? Am I listening to myself and creating space for that to come through? Um, or am I, am I listening to how someone's told me it can be done? Like the illusion of, uh, of security and, and knowing something like, is even though it might not work because it's us and maybe it's not connected to our path um and we're creating our path it's such an exciting space to go what is in the future we get to create and and it doesn't need to be drawn out for us in any other way we're here at this point in time so that we can create new currents and help change this like uh uh the creative spark or or how um, artists are viewed without the intention of like, you know, I'm going to change the way people see us as much as I'm going to listen to my heart so that other artists can and really connect through that. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think what's so important to point out is like artists are like the best at creating mm -hmm. nothing, right? Like pulling mm -hmm. something nothing and then like turning it in to mm -hmm. something tangible and real and like money's the exact same process right mm -hmm. so it's like wow. it's giving ourselves permission to envision that specific thing so like envision the dollar amount and envis envisioning the life with the money in it with the resources in it with the freedom um in it mm -hmm. and and following our intuition trusting our process to you know being resourceful within our environment Mm -hmm. bring that about in our own way mm -hmm. and without do things that we don't want to do you know just as you um create your own creative process like you, mm -hmm. you what tools skills and resources you have available to you in any given moment and then any given time or place to produce whatever it is you envisioned and just like going with that and trusting it and like moving through not knowing how it's going to turn out or like trying and it not turning out quite the way that you wanted and continuing and moving through and keep listening and, you know, staying true to the vision and allowing that vision to pull you. Same mm -hmm. thing with money and abundance. Like just be creative, like be resourceful. There's literally like an unlimited way to mm -hmm. bring opportunities into our world. Absolutely. Potential. Yeah. What was that last thing you said? Like everybody has that potential. Yes. And so having a clear why, a clear vision, I think is such an important part of this uh, because it's, it's, a, it's just grounding. It can help me decipher whether or not something is um, in alignment with where, the path I'm going into. And, and so how for you, or maybe how isn't the right verbiage there, but like when it comes to your vision and creating a why, when it's unseen, um yeah what comes up for you with that so like one thing that I've seen for myself and also for my clients over and over and over again that when something mm -hmm. is a desire it just is like it mm -hmm. doesn't go away like yeah. it, it everybody has different desires and I feel like the more we share about our desires 
it helps everyone else to connect with their desires which body desires different things mm. like desires to do things differently or in like slightly different ways and you know people want more freedom and abundance for like very different things even though obviously we all connect on like a lot of the you know basics mm -hmm. um, and even though, you know, whenever we move through like fear and resistance or disbelief or limitation or like scarcity, um, like when it comes down to it, our desire is always there and it, mm. it's there no matter what. So when you kind of accept that, when I accept that, I'm like, and you know, and I've seen that for myself in just that proving it to myself with like the breadcrumb approach of like, oh, here's a breadcrumb that feels like it's leading me in the direction of something that mm. I know I desire if even you know at the beginning I just started with like I don't want this so okay. so like the desire would be just for something different and then like something mm -hmm. different you know and I just start moving in that direction and then the more you move in that direction the more you start to gather specificity of like okay like this, mm. like, this or like this and the more you keep following those breadcrumbs the more you keep taking that step towards that and kind of you know taking a leap and watching it work out over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. you really build that foundation of self-trust and that's how you really build that connection to that little voice and those feelings and, and you know that intuition about mm -hmm. what it is that you truly want and you also build like a foundational self-trust that like if I'm willing to acknowledge my desire and I'm willing to take action and keep moving towards my desire and keep doing everything within my power to move myself closer to the realization of my desire. Like ine they're inevitable, like mm -hmm. they're really inevitable. And like you mm. actually can't really pick it up and you'll probably have so much fun along the way. You know, even if you haven't got it for a really long time, like you'll be having so much fun, you'll be getting all the growth and yeah. like golden nuggets along the way that like, yeah, it's like, you know, the, it's all about the journey versus the destiny. <laughs> yeah are inevitable like your desires are inevitable so mm -hmm. we can be in resistance um and we can choose to be in pain and we can choose to continue to take action and the things that we that we've already proven to ourselves aren't really working for us mm -hmm. or we can experiment and take mm -hmm. different and get better at it you know yeah i love that and i love the the idea of we get it doesn't need to be clear right up front like you'll see somebody often and zach my partner and i were talking about this the other day like you'll see someone who has made it in in any of our eyes and then you go oh how is it so clear how are you going step to step to step to step and it's unfolding and and really what i took from that is it's not it's not clear it's not clear from the opposite side of the direction. When I'm moving forward into the unknown, it's not clear. And the intention to be with myself and actually not to choose the resistance. And if it comes up, know that, you know, expressing myself is, is what I love. And so I'm going to choose to move into it regardless of what comes through. Have you read uh, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious along the topic of resistance in that if anyone that's watching or going to watch hasn't read that book, it's very about we're going to face resistance as we choose to listen to ourselves and express ourselves. And it's a daily beast that we get to look right at in the face and choose our art anyways. Yeah. And you know what? I love um, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. Mm. The okay. Forever like, just like the whole thing of like the war of art feels very like masculine yeah <laughs> it's like the lens of war because I feel like yeah like the more you resist whatever you resist persists right yeah and, like, it's okay to be in resistance um and yeah it like and it's part of the process but so but for me personally I find like the more you can be moving away from pain mm -hmm. um, or you could be moving towards pleasure. I think it's like, that was the Tony Robbins thing. Mm. So whatever your yeah. feed pleasure, the more we feed our connection to what we're inspired by and what we're excited by and what feels mm -hmm. really good, that starts to create so much more momentum that like pulls us out of the resistance. Mm. Really like choosing to feed the focus yeah. on possibility and enjoyment and you know like wouldn't it be fun if this worked out and mm. I feel really inspired to do today and to really start to live 
a life that's fed by passion and pleasure versus moving away from pain. And as somebody mm -hmm. who's full blown burnout, like literally yeah. any of the things that I enjoyed anymore, um, wow. why I moved into entrepreneurship because wow. I want to have freedom and flexibility. Also, like I've been so far in resistance, from obviously clear, clearly listening that there was a different direction for me that it got to that place where I was in so much pain that I couldn't, uh -huh. you know, support the signals anymore. So like, I totally get it about uh -huh. from moving away from pain. Um, but that's really the mindset piece and like the energy piece that really shifted everything for me mm -hmm. is choosing to cultivate the state that I desire to be living from. But from there, we just access so much higher levels of inspiration, you know, motivation and creativity that will just like, you know, fast track to the fun. Yes. Completely. I love that. I just, I love what you're speaking to. And this brought up the, the push versus flow. And I had a similar response to the Stephen Pressfield. It's helpful when I do feel resistance towards a project or a challenge come up because I go, I can handle it. And when I'm focused on the flow of something, Push versus flow is so different to me. And I'm actually, I think this is something I'm going to keep expanding on um, just because I'm so intrigued by it is because flow doesn't necessarily mean that we're always moving. We're always going. We're always like now, now, now to do, to do, to do. And things are going to work out quicker. Things are going to, uh, you know, provide that liberty that we're all looking for. And I'm curious when you, I, I would love to hear more about your burnout and how you really did shift into something that does nourish you and you're excited about each day. You'll love the story. So <laughs> yeah, it was really like an intuitive thing where, you know, like my whole body shut down and I had mm. like severe depression, like 6 p.m. headache, like literally had to stop going out, had to stop all of my projects, had to like delay my, I was doing my master's at the time wow. and it was like my body's way of being like stop with the distractions and go inside mm. there's stuff that you need to sort out and that you mm. need to hear and that you need to listen to that's going to give you the data that you need to move in a direction that's going to be much better for you mm. and you know, obviously I did not have that information <laughs> yeah 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 and it was way more dramatic and stressful um, <laughs> But the thing that got out of it, there was like a little voice inside of me that was like, sing and play music. Mm. And so and like a bit about my background, like my background was, I was it was in dance and musical theater and theater when I was all through school and my bachelor's was in drama. Then I got into film. And mm. so I started, I, my previous career was in film on film crew. So I was working behind the camera. So, you know, I loved it and it was like adventurous and, you know, yeah. up to the point, but I, I had kind of like abandoned using my body as like a creative, mm. um, ex like a tool of creative expression yeah. and former, I'm like, that's just a part of my being. And it was, I, it was like spiritually, I'd like lost an arm and I hadn't mm -hmm. lost it because I was enjoying it and it was like stimulating in other ways. And so just coming back to you and I didn't, I don't have any musical training. Like I learned basic guitar and was just like singing and you know my voice everything was so fatigued but just giving doing that one thing for myself for no reason other than for my own joy like that was the thing that just like started to bring my energy back you wow. know that need and mm -hmm. fulfilling it you know just like has op opened up so much for me in terms of like reconnecting with my creativity as a writer and then got really into songwriting and, um and that's really what healed me is just mm -hmm. being use my connect to my creativity for like no other purpose no other project no money no like doing anything for anybody else but just doing it for me mm -hmm. and, and translating that into like every decision that I do like my business I do it for me like all of my marketing I do wow. I share yeah the work that I deliver okay. to I do it in the way that I feel called that brings me the most joy and brings me the most pleasure and mm -hmm. you know that's what's you know I've completely recovered my energy like completely regained my health and just 
you know, the incredible wisdom of the body that I learned just from having to do the work to really understand what was going on to create mm. it. obviously been such a gift um, to, in, in just a level of understanding of like how our spirit and our body and our energy just is like communicating and interrelated and how to care for all of those different parts of ourselves so that you know I can I that was how I figured out how what I needed to be able to thrive in the way that I wanted to my life essentially absolutely thank you so much for sharing that you're so welcome that's I can't I can't imagine I had health uh a, I, I say a bunch of health things it felt like it was a similar there was a point that I just said, I do not need to be in this level of, of suffering every day and not even really know what it is behind it. And when I moved to California, I became very curious about uh, what's deeper there, what's going on. I had, had just been meditating for about a year and a half before that. And I think I was creating more space to actually hear from myself and test out and experiment. And that, that journey alone has been so wild. Um, and I would want everyone to experience their own version of, of listening to yourself and really starting to tap into whatever it is you hear uh, that lights you up to do. Because that is so, there's something that came up is hearing you saying uh, the most joy in every single thing you're doing. I had thought about um, a musician I spoke to in the past who said, I was, I was pursuing drumming professionally and at a point because drums had once been my place of solitude and, and peace. Uh, as I was pursuing it professionally, something changed where it was no longer that and I needed another creative form to express myself for no one else. And I think that that's so important and, and then to use that expression that's feeding you and you're not creating or I'm not creating it for anyone else to then come back and fuel the rest because I don't think it needs to be either my profession sucks the life out of me and I need another form to balance it. I think it can be all celebrating, all thriving. Yeah. Totally. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with human design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm a manifesting generator. And when I found okay. that, oh, that totally makes sense. It's like people are just designed to impulsively be into different things at different times mm -hmm. and really try you know, and again, it always boils down to self-trust, but just knowing that if you feel like, you know, tinkering around in the garden for five hours, like trust that the idea you're going to get there yeah. changes everything for you, you know, and just like yeah. Really, yeah, being in that flow and trusting your intuition and like really like indulging mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're feeling called to explore and experiment with your time and energy. Mm, yes and it might not look it's it very well possibly not going to look how you would expect it to look when you answer that call like Zach and I've been building out the van to travel across country and really exploring it and the biggest thing we wanted to experience was time with family and adventuring outside and naturally we're both going to be interested in what sounds come from those ex explorations and you know the artistic little bits of it but the main driver was we want to go on an adventure and I would have never thought that working on the van because that's a complete like different turn and track than I was thinking I was supposed to be on to pursue art and yet in that so much inspiration has come uh like all these different things that I felt restricted by and uh fearful of continuing to deepen like unhealthy relationships with everything is starting to become so peaceful and exciting and I, I just I'm so excited about it because I would not have thought that that was what needed to happen and yet it was and so um, just reminder for everyone that it's not gonna look potentially not gonna look how you expect it it might not logically make sense even if you are an artist and go well that's not art and yet it is and so um, oh a question I had involving this is actually for artists who are not on their phone a lot or using a bunch of technology and want to build a business, connect with people, um, what do you what do you say as a creative coach in that on ways to to you know where I'm going still build and connect? Yeah, so like this is such a good question, Thank and you. I believe that technology is just a reflection of mm. like 
ever like in our universe and like our internal universe and yeah. our potential to be able to connect and um <sighs> Yeah, it's funny because with a lot of my clients that I work with, it's like when you get clear, when you tune in, when you get clear on the desire and you have that clarity for yourself, mm -hmm. like that clarity within you, you know, that will always spark inspiration for whatever your next step is within the resources that you have available to you. And obviously that's going to look different for every individual, but just simply by getting into that place of connection and clarity and alignment with what it is you truly desire the people just start to show up. Like they'll show up next mm -hmm. week. They'll show up at like your friend's picnic in the park on the blanket next to you. Like yeah. they start to show up. And, um, you know, I think like the internet and social media is just a reflection of like the unlimited potential that we have to connect with people at all times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's obviously a very convenient way to connect with people, particularly internationally, but mm -hmm. it's totally possible within wherever you are and I've really seen that as you know I was an immigrant in Canada then I was an immigrant in the US like yeah. zero networks like literally yeah. built from scratch like I lived and traveled to 16 different countries in the past six years wow. and everywhere I go I find myself next to somebody who's just like my person you know yeah. 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 to exchange and I love that you just did a post about bumblebee I was like I really identify <laughs> I feel like I'm blown on the wind from one place to another to like mm. little like ideas from one place and then scatter them over there in another place. <laughs> and I just feel like I'm be being blown on the wind because I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to go next. Like all I know mm -hmm. is I'm going to to move and I'll end up somewhere and there'll be like a super amazing exchange or like I'll meet somebody and like thing magical things always unfold when I say yes to that. Mm. And so you know, and, I, and I've done it in the 3D world too, like, you know, gone and put flyers around a local, local neighborhood that I've been living in at the time, like do, running in-person workshops, doing like free mm -hmm. events, you know, inviting people over to my house. I've hosted women's circles wow. in my house. You know, there's like, when you allow yourself to just listen to your inspiration, trust your creativity, like there is unlimited potential to mm -hmm. create everything that you could ever possibly envision right now exactly where you are and when you shift the stories so whenever whatever stories you have around like oh you know i'm not that's not possible for me because da 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 da, da, da. Mm -hmm. i'm not social or like people in my town don't blah 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 or like i'm not this enough or i'm not that enough like when we literally like sit down and do the cleaning of mm -hmm. like lies that we picked up for whatever reason mm -hmm. or there's the stories of resistance and flip those to stories of possibility and say yes and trust if I desire something it's totally possible slash completely inevitable and when I live from that place then you literally like open up your your peripheral vision to see opportunity mm. that are there mm. all around us every day that you're just mm. not if you're in a story right yes absolutely yesterday we were exploring in the in the park we live in joshua tree and we were up on this uh i don't know we we're climbing something i don't even know what part of the park it was and i was gripping and i i i just got scared and i was like wow i'm pretty terrified right now and so i was able to stay right in that moment with the fear in me feel it breathe into it and then as I was willing to just kind of hold my little baby inside as me, hand, inner child, whatever you would say that is, then I saw like, oh, there's a place I could put my hand here. And oh, I could wedge my body here. And it doesn't mean that fear went away. It doesn't mean that like uh, I pushed my way through it. But there was something about the subtlety switch where I'm breathing and I'm there with myself. And it's like, all right, we've got this together. And so I'd say every step that we can take that is is intentional and connected to also the non-attachment i wasn't i didn't need to get to the top i think that's a huge part of this too and, and the metaphor can be so easily transitioned into the artist path because if i'm in full pursuit of oh this i'm so happy i said this because this is what i wanted to ask another thing was anytime i've been focused on i need money it's rooted in scarcity or whatever it is. Whenever I'm focused on the money, no matter how I try and change my internal thing, it's it's because I'm trying to force and control and push and it's never worked. And uh, what do you share with someone switching from 
the like mm, I would say it comes down to self trust. I'm kind of answering it there, but I'm like just it's it's never worked when it's solely focused on money. Right. Yeah. That's just like a law of the universe that like yeah. there's a need, then it's a void. But when mm. we, so whatever we whatever we notice, whatever we appreciate, whatever we acknowledge is already there, we continue to attract and create more of. Mm. Same thing. Like I've noticed that with myself. Like, you know, like money, I've historically had a really, really challenging relationship with money, like super financially disorganized, avoidant, yes. like under earning um you know loads of debt and so that just that cycle of like panic and like fear and scarcity is just like a pattern in my nervous Mm -hmm. system right and so obviously doing all of the work to just retrain the stories retrain the focus um and then obviously you know it doesn't happen so much anymore but i would still go into those like now because now i notice when it's happening and i'm like oh it's happening and like this is so but like the panic yeah. i'm in of just like the panic of like there's not going to be enough right which mm-hmm. is just like, i feel like ancestral right like we like if you've had grandparents in wartime like it's just like inherited emotional patterns in our dna mm-hmm. and and i so i would be like oh there's not enough there's not enough there's not enough and then you know it would get to like that that pressure where that became really became my reality and it would like start the money would start to run out and then as soon as I sit down do the mindset work flip the stories re-choose my focus to focus on you know abundance opportunity appreciation for whatever support is already there even if it's a tiny amount just through shifting that focus I've seen it time and time again I'll literally like go into my email and there'll be like emails from people who emailed me during that week where I was freaking out about money, like asking, offering to pay me, like asking to work. Didn't see it. Wow. Your brain is like conditioned to focus on creating more of whatever it is that you're focused on. So Mm. by focus by, and this is why I'm like, my, if you want to, if you want to have different results, you know, do the mindset work every day. Like if you don't want to have stinky breath, brush your teeth every day, like (laughs) habit, right? Mm -hmm. that we're recycling most of our thoughts are recycled and Mm -hmm. thoughts are recycled from our parents thoughts and from our grandparents Uh thoughts we want to drastically create a different reality it requires that we start to recreate and recycle new thoughts that allow us to focus open up our focus to see the opportunities for abundance that are around us every day everywhere all the time so Mm -hmm. that whenever you're in a need that's the time to even if you have one dollar in your account to appreciate that dollar and be like I'm so grateful for this dollar I'm so happy that I dollar how much abundance do I have in this dollar how much opportunity is available Mm. dollar and really you know be appreciating the abundance that you have and I find the easiest way to shift back into abundance when you are experiencing genuine scarcity is in nature right like oh my gosh you're right you're right here <laughs> all around us yeah like the, like the grass will keep growing the rain will keep raining the sun will keep shining the plants will keep growing like how beautiful are these trees how beautiful are these clouds this sun this sky like it's here it's here for me every single day oh, how lucky am i how good does that feel and just like mm-hmm. into that place physiologically of like abundance and then, you know, starting to name what you have to be grateful for the people, the relationships, you know, the bed, the like the things in your immediate surrounding. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the dollars, like be appreciative for the dollars and mm-hmm. um, yeah, and keep appreciating the dollars and the dollars will continue to appreciate. Absolutely. And I love that you brought nature into this because I was thinking about what recently I've been tapping into is the in on the same tie of connecting to flow is even being in the car and focusing on uh, what is flowing around us. If you're in traffic, focusing on what is the lanes that are going quickly, the people that are going going quickly. If you're stuck and the people over there are stuck too, 
focusing on how my breath is continuously flowing and the things internally are flowing. And when I was driving before this, I was going, wow, the wind has no one starting it or stopping it. It's constantly flowing. We had a windstorm in the desert last night. So I'm very like, oh, in the, in the wind space. And it's like, what is it bringing to offer? And if nature isn't your medium of inspiration, you know, picking something that's close to you that you're constantly enamored by, like, what is this? I'm intrigued by this. I want to learn more about this because for me, nature is a huge source of inspiration. And so tapping into that inspiration and going, oh my gosh, let's, let's find out more about this and, and discover that. And as you start to flow, then naturally, I just, I just believe it now. It's, it's been too magical to not. <laughs> it's like we cultivate the more we cultivate states of appreciation the more we attract things to appreciate like it's mm -hmm. just a universal law it's a law of gratitude the more we are grateful for what it is that we have and it's like it's so like infuriatingly simple <laughs> right but be like i'm you know i'm a classic overthinker and have had to work so hard to uncomplicate things mm -hmm. And to just listen and trust, and um, like it's it's so simple, and we all know it, right? Every time you hear it, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, like I know about the gratitude thing, but like when you do it, your life is completely freaking different than when you're not doing it. Yeah. Find yourself being ungrateful. You know, I'm, I just think of myself as like a brat. I'm like, am I being a brat right now? If something mm. out the way that I wanted to, I'm like, where am I being a brat? Where am I, I not appreciating? Because most of the time, and I, you know, and I really see this through like, through the constant reflection is if we don't, if we haven't received what it is that we desire, we're getting the lessons. Like we are mm. getting to evolve us to the place to be able to receive that. And yeah. you know, and it always comes back to trust so it's like it's never there's never an absence of what it is that we desire we're always on our way like just by acknowledging it and declaring it once like we're moving towards it mm. um, but it's like but acknowledging that and appreciating that is the thing that actually gets us there faster or more smoothly or more enjoyably mm -hmm. and that we're always supported on, if our desires are divine, our desires are, you know, like I said, part of the ecosystem, we are supported. Everything that we need, require, and desire in order to realize them is available to us right now in every moment. So even when it looks like things aren't panning out, we're, we are held. Mm. Like we do have everything that we need in the meantime before, you know, on our way to the fruition of our desires. Yeah. And another thing is the, the baby steps. Like, um, I noticed something the other day, I was talking to, to Robin about this and I used to, when I started to learn about everything we're talking about or a, a great deal of it, of, of gratitude at all and intention and, and just starting to open the door to all of this, I started to uh, go, you know, if something's bothering me, like say a fly lands on me and I go, oh, like I, I, I wanna swat it away. And then I go, oh no, I can love on that fly. That is too far of a leap for me to be in alignment and truly like exuding what I mean to create there in that shift, if that makes sense. So instead of going from, ah, I wish it'd get off me to, oh, I love it. I'm not really feeling the I love it. I'm just trying to resist what actually came up. So when it's just like I can switch into, oh, well, all right, the fly's there. I can be curious about it. I don't need to go all the way full throttle into forcing myself to love it. Totally. And, you know, particularly around money, which let's just be honest, is like such a trigger. Like we have so much collective. Yeah. So I always say like the goal is to just at least get to a, a minimum place of neutrality. Mm. Right. It's also okay if it's, you're not in neutrality, but at least you can be observing that you are mm. reacting. And then Way and be like cool I'm reacting in an uncomfortable way but I'm not gonna get wrapped up in the story about this I'm not gonna continue mm -hmm. to reaffirm the lies about my like lack of ability or worthiness or whatever to be able to receive the abundance that I desire I'm just gonna acknowledge my reactions and be like cool this sucks and this is really uncomfortable but I'm acknowledging it 
and I'm choosing to shift to stories of appreciation. I'm choosing to move in, mm -hmm. in a, a, you know, appreciation for myself for being here and not, at least I'm not like avoidant, at least I'm not checked out, at least I'm not distracting, at least I'm here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more we can just like acclimatize our nervous systems to uncomfortable or triggering topics around money, around conversations around money, around exchanges of money, asking for money, receiving money, you know, whatever it is yeah. for you, to be in that place, to allow yourself to be triggered, to allow yourself to be uncomfortable and to observe it and to continue to be there, to retrain your nervous system that actually it's safe for you to be there. And actually yeah. when you take action from a story of abundance, from a story of possibility, that things do actually, they can work out in a different mm -hmm. way and to just start to start to create that evidence for yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, th and that there's no secret to it, you know, and, and by you and I having a conversation about it and by sparking up conversations with your friends, with your family, with, um, with people you're inspired by to learn more, there's no one right way. I mean, this is why we talk about it being in alignment with you and your stories and, and creating. Um, it's so important to continue to not think that like it needs to look the way that it's looked for others before to be successful and yeah that there's just like a deeper um permission there and and curiosity gets to exist when we observe and uh, i find that curiosity even when i feel fiery i i used to think like oh if i'm angry oh if i feel these things then i won't get what i want in life and then i started to go oh well if i'm curious about the anger and present with the anger and not avoiding it or shutting it down. I'm not pointing it at someone. It's just like it's allowing me to then really be able to 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 live and breathe, and and it is that retraining I think in real time. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know what your timing looks like, but are, were you thinking of ending at three for this? Whatever. Yeah. I love okay. this. Thank yeah. you. Me too. <laughs> yeah. This is great. And. Something that was coming up earlier um, when I was thinking about our talk is just the difference culturally, American versus other cultures. I, I haven't lived anywhere else for long enough out of the country to really observe what we look like from the outside. And I would love your perspective having gone so many places on um, just, you know, seeing America from the outside a bit, if you can. Um, <laughs> seeing America from the outside. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. the thing that, um, that comes up from travel and traveling so much yeah. just reaffirms that you just get to do it in whatever way you want to do it. Because, mm -hmm. right? like, everybody's living life in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it works for them, or it doesn't work for them. And it's, you know, in their own way. And it's, like, really incredible, like, how humans are capable of living and, like, the diversity of experience. Mm -hmm. And... And I feel like the same goes for within the US too. Like there's such a diversity of experience. And um, I think, you know, one of the, one of the, like the things that people from the outside of America tend to judge Americans for is for the fact that I think it's like 50% of or more of Americans don't have a passport and that it can mm. be quite like in, inward looking, you know, like wow. America of the universe and like we're yeah. the in the world and like who gives a shit about any of the other countries because like America's so amazing and everyone's just like you know <laughs> but then I got here and I was like oh like now I realize why 50% of Americans don't travel outside of America mm -hmm. America is like it, it's like 50 Europe so like it's so wow. big so diverse and you know even though it definitely has like a you know like a very dominant culture like in the media landscape mm -hmm. and in America like it's very multicultural mm -hmm. and it's very very diverse and geographically it's super super diverse and such an interesting place and it's like full spectrum right it's mm -hmm. like you've got both both ends of the spectrum are like far reaching and yeah. I think why like, people love it because yeah. there's so much possibility here there's so much potential here there's like you know that the like leaders in so many industries here and I think the thing I love about America is 
because it has so much less history. Mm. But it's not entrenched in tradition and wow. dog, you know, it, or it hasn't been for so long. Like it's not so deeply rooted. Yeah. So it's like, a, so there's so much space for new and for like wow. forward thinking ideas and for more progressive um more progressive ideas for you know particularly for like demographics and populations who like weren't traditionally so represented in European culture which is obviously like the founding culture of yeah. America um and even though there's still like a long long way to go from the damage that you know yeah. Europe has done on American yeah. culture and but that's one of my favorite things about it particularly like just like like I feel like women are the most empowered in North America um, mm. I know from cultures that I've experienced yeah. and sort of like the level of freedom that women have and the level of contribution that that women have um and yeah that's one of my favorite things I could go on and on <laughs> but I love love being here it's definitely like comes with its own unique challenges mm. um but it's it's an amazing country Thank you. I'm saying thank you. Like I, I, I owned America. <laughs> thank you for that. No, but thank you for sharing there. And it inspired me. Another thing that Robin has said recently is talk to strangers. Like by talking to more strangers, we can, one, it's just beautiful to see how we can connect with someone that we don't know. And then two, it's, it's like, then we can be, a, we can actually distinguish when we're in a situation that is uncomfortable or not something that we need to continue versus everyone that's a stranger is dangerous. And I think this can be seen in social media and in person. I think both are helpful um, to see what types of communities we can create because this is a little bit of a tangent outside of it, but it does connect to our creativity and our expression because I think that there's so much to learn from one another in our travels in the United States, outside of it, and by sharing different cultural um, ideas and, and then how we're making it up on top of that. I think that there's there's so much play available to all of us. And if I if I was resistant to talking to a stranger on being fearful of what that could hold, it, it could hold me back from that inspiration for the next whatever it is I want to create. I totally agree. I think that's such an important message, particularly now when it's so easy to stay within the conversations of people who think like us, particularly online too. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, I don't think it's ever been more important to be speaking to people who, who share different perspectives from us as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. They being willing to be uncomfortable because it's like things, things that are so blown up like in the media or online that when you actually, you know, get down to it on a human level and you're like, oh, like this person has like a drastically different political perspective to me. But actually when we're sitting in this room together, like it doesn't matter that much. It doesn't, mm -hmm. like, you know, in some cases it really does matter. Mm -hmm. um, but in many cases, it doesn't, it doesn't pull away from like our ability to connect on a human level. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's connected to this conversation about what the heck are we doing here in the world? Like, how did I come to be and what's beneath that? And, and just connecting with the fact that we are uh, of similar, like we all are skeletons and have these things on us and are, are sorting out or making up um, whatever it is is going on. I love going there because it's like, no matter what belief system I've grown to build, um, I understand that if I'm threatening someone else's from my beliefs and vice versa, it can get to be like a fight for my life because I'm, I need to have that belief to exist. And it's, it's just going underneath that huge tidal wave and sitting beneath the water and going, where can we create this tranquility together by aligning on the fact that we're both living, breathing, seeing, uh, you know, aware, awake humans and, and how can we connect and also have those beliefs you know like what how can we focus on what we can connect on and hold space to be different yeah and I think exactly what you've been talking about this whole time is like observing our reactions and yeah. acting on them but like acting from that higher place yeah connection mm. and it comes down to trusting ourselves if I didn't hear from myself first 
you know, I would have immediately just tried to spit out something to confirm my belief. So the work of connecting with one another, um, this could be our, our ending thing is the verbiage around do the work. You know, how can we, I'm curious about how we can shift that because um, it's so important. Like I agree what that means or what I, my experience of what that means is really important for all of us to experience. And it sounds, it sounds hard, you yeah. know? So like what's, and yet if I say, well, like be the play to try and just reverse like the verbiage, it, it feels like that jump that's too far. Like how do we be a bridge? How can this be a bridge uh, to help those that are not curious about inner discovery be curious? Yeah, totally. Like the words that popped in my mind were like, like play with possibility you know mm, like, yeah. that's like that openness like curiosity like be curious like be curious about something new that you haven't experienced before be curious about mm. how something different because that's it mm. like that's the work and you know like it's great to acknowledge that it, it does feel like work to be like mm. I'm in so much resistance right now but I'm going mm. to write stories of resistance that I'm experiencing and I'm going to question them and I'm going to flip them and I'm going to choose to like bring my mind over to this possibility, even though it feels like it's not safe, even though it feels yeah. like it's possible, like internally it takes work to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And it can literally take five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like this is what I talk about with my clients all the time. It's like, yeah, you can be in resistance around something for weeks and weeks and weeks, days and days, months and months, whatever. And then you sit down to do it and it literally took you like half an hour and then it changed yeah. life. You know, it's so it, and and but I feel like that's really what it is just training ourselves and training our mind to feel safe in possibility and mm -hmm. like meaning the unknown as possibility, like like that Abraham Hicks phrase, like wouldn't it be wouldn't it be nice if mm. wouldn't it be great if this actually worked? Wouldn't it be great if you know, and like really like moving our focus and our attention onto what it is that we would enjoy mm -hmm. versus trying to protect ourselves against the things that we don't want absolutely and i i what just came to mind is this uh conversation of meditation and and what i would usually pair with this exact conversation with presence and uh, intention and i want to connect with more artists to hear from a larger uh group because I don't think that every artist needs to meditate by the linear sit down, meditate, and then you'll now build an awareness where you can tap in and, and then your questions or your what if this, wouldn't it be great if will work. It's like by living in our expression, by um, moving into the artistry, it's its own dynamic meditation. If you've never even watched a meditation or listened to a meditation, it's possible, very possible, you're still connecting to that that force that I think we're all talking about. And so really like spreading more light and connection in the artist community of look at the work we've already done. Like you don't, you're not just starting at, like you're not starting at the starting line or at all even. Um, and that the idea of playing and being curious um, is already in your toolbox is really exciting to me. Right. Like artists are like the, the best at these tools so mm -hmm. it's like, which area of your life which area of your life feels like stuck or feels like it's calling causing you pain or feel like you're disempowered or you don't have choice and just bring those tools that you already have and know mm. do so well of play and curiosity and like exploration and experimentation and apply those tools to that area to money mm. to relationships to health right mm -hmm. absolutely there was a, a painting i did when i said i want to start getting creative i want to merge that exactly what you're talking about to the uncomfortable places and this i think it was months ago i started writing out things about money and like doing the font and the words in different ways and when i paint i love to just like okay now i'm doing something entirely different on top you might not even see the original layer and now i'm like five chapters of that one painting in and the other day I put white on over it, I put primer on it, and it started to pull up the first one that I drew. So it was like a huge money symbol originally. 
And I was like, wow, it's, it's unique to see because I forgot this original painting held that. And like, we can hold space to evolve creatively and merge these different ideas. Cause now I'm in an entirely new relationship that's grown with money specifically. And so I just, I really uh, appreciated expressing myself with that in mind and, and not being attached to where it went. And so if, if, someone would want to leave this call if you're going to leave with something i would say uh be curious and you know play play with something without doing it for anyone else like you were talking about from the beginning sarah find something that you can do right now that is for no one but yourself and brings joy i love it mm. Really good. And for anyone that hasn't tuned into you, you are so generous. I get pumped up. I'm like, if you email Sarah, you will get even in your uh, in the behind your signature, you get like free abundance meditation, like thing after thing after thing. And it just is so exciting to connect with you uh, being a leader in creativity in, in so many of the things we're touching on today. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Who's watching send me a message and i'll send you my creative um money meditation that's awesome well this has been beautiful is there anything that you that's on your heart that we haven't talked about that you want to end with no i think that was it you like perfectly mm -hmm. summarized it and um yeah and I, I i guess i would just like wrap that up because i loved how you connected it to like doing the thing for your own joy like mm -hmm. we can do that with money mm -hmm. you so many like social stigmas mm. stories attached to it but it's like create money for your own joy you know like the more joy you experience wow. you experience that just like the higher level the more freedom you have to be able to be fully expressed in all of the good things that you do and your creativity you know generosity family whatever it is right mm -hmm. like we don't need to prove ourselves worthy or good or good enough or whatever it's like mm -hmm create it because it's fun create it because you know you enjoy it and for everything that comes up to you just like you would create anything else mm. yeah and i would love for anybody who's like going to experiment and explore with any, any ideas that have come up in this conversation today to please reach out and and share what shifts you've experienced mm -hmm. yes oh incredible well thank you yeah, and share with us what's coming up. You know, this can be a resource for, you know, until time, until Instagram doesn't exist. <laughs> and then we'll do something with it then. So, yeah, thank you for being here. And anyone that wants to connect with me or Sarah, reach out to us directly and share with us what's working for you, what's coming up for you, if we can be of aid in any way. This is a, this is a community. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. You can check me out with sarahmack.com or with Sarah Mac on my Instagram. Please come and follow me. And yeah, I'm always doing, you can go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That could help me out mm. with content over there for you as well. And yeah, tell me, tell me what comes up. Tell me what you want to hear more of. Um, I love having this conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, all right. Well, I'll see you soon. And thanks again. If you're in Joshua Tree, come up. Well, if you're in California, oh, come I on by. I love Joshua Tree. Oh. Thank you so much, Madison. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.